Welcome back to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we head straight to our second conversation where we look at the Children's Day celebration and our current reality. Now, as Niger joins the rest of the world to celebrate Children's Day, stakeholders have appealed to government to address issues of insecurity in North and bridge learning gaps among school children in the zone. Since February 2014, North in Niger has experienced at least 10 high profile attacks on secondary school. More than 1,000 school children have been victims of mass abduction by armed groups, while some of these students have been released. A significant number remain in captivity. Boko Haram has continued to attack schools, abducting students and using them as suicide bombers or marrying them off as girls to soldiers. Attack on school children have many implications for students themselves, along with their families and the country. A large insecurity focused on centers of learning. It fuels parents' unwillingness to send their wards to schools, thereby advancing Boko Haram's goal for preventing Western education. A recent report revealed that over 600 schools in six states in the north were shut down in 2021 due to widespread insecurity. Compounding the situation, children without education can be specifically vulnerable to recruitment by bandits. The wave of insecurity in the northern Nigeria has therefore created a generation of children whose education has been permanently retarded. The shortage of education could also lead to skill gaps in workforce, reducing youth's ability to catalyze solely needed economic development. Rafiu Katui is an author, the heroine of Faith. He's here with us this morning. Rafiu, I hope I got your name correctly. Yeah, good day. Good day. <laughs> it's good to have you. Here, yeah. I probably would have said uh, happy children's day, yeah, but it feels like we're, no, we're no longer children, are we children? Well, so let's get straight to the crux of um, the conversation. With all this going on, especially in security, and you, you've seen the statistics, uh, the data that's been made available, do you think that we should be celebrating Children's Day? Does it call for any sort of celebration? I mean, you have physical events and activities to commemorate this day. Yes, but so badly. We should have so bad reflection. But that doesn't mean that we should not celebrate. But so badly. The, the situation speaks for itself. Going by what just read to us now, before you engage me. The insecurity in the country is alarming, except we choose to <laughs> shy away from the truth. But the truth of the matter is that no matter how we try to shy away, this very issue of security keep showing up staring at us in the face every day. Uh, the issue that took Leah Sharigo to captivity, February 19, 2019, is still very much with us. Still very much with us. February 19? Yes. 2019? 18, February 19, 2018 still very much with us. And uh, right from that time, there have been multiple. I, I, my concern is really about Leah Sharivu and her likes that are still in captivity. Let me take it from that point of February 19, 2018, when 109 students of government guests, science and technical college were kidnapped, among which is uh, Leah Sharibu. Even before then, you will remember, you recollect that there was Chibok kidnap abduction. Then Dapshi, thereafter, 
we have a, a Tangara. <laughs> Thereafter, we have a Tandume. That one was, uh, before they could take them into the nearby bush, they were rescued. Thereafter, we have Kagara. Thereafter, we have a, a, I can't remember the name now, but about 100 and 317 were kidnapped. Thereafter, we have the Afaka something. Then, as we speak now, as we speak now, uh, the, the along Kaduna, Abuja Road, some villages there have been <laughs> uh, uh, almost being governed by uh, the terrorists, not really Boko Haram. I heard that on the news recently. So, but um, let, let's get back to, you know, when abduction started. I mean, looking at, you know, the uh, statistics and the figures that's been put out, we're looking at 2014 at the time where you had all of this abduction going on. And some people... There was Chibo before 2014. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of people have said that... Um, this is actually not true, especially with the Chibok. Uh, so th there's a lot of back and forth with that. And some people said that some of these reports are really not true. They're, they're just being fabricated. And so it's, it seems like, you know, some politicking has been going on, you know, with all of this. Uh, and I know that you have authored a book. Uh, the grace you, of you, God. Yes, uh, you, you have put out your thought. But what, what do you really know about, you know, all of this uh, kidnappings, especially in the north... Uh, you know, the northern part of Nigeria, northwest, and the northeast. Thank you. When Chibok adoption occurred, it was a, they almost made us to believe that it was a rumor. I'm taking from what you said. <laughs> but when Dabshi happened and this other series of adoption, it became clear to everybody that uh, this thing is not being uh, play politics, that they are real, they are with us. So the point here is that we should be ready to face the reality, although it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a terrible one indeed. But we should be ready to, to accept the reality and wake up, stand up to it, so that this issue can be put behind us. OK. So about, um, but it's not, let's not believe that these issues are rumor. No, no more. They are not mere rumors. So why do you think that uh, these children has, uh, if you look at these attacks and the pattern that we have mentioned, it's targeted towards you know, schools, and uh, at the end of the day, it sends a signal. And so sure. we have seen that there's sure. been some resentment yeah, towards thank education. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, the, the main terrorist group that actually uh, came, brought this issue to light in Nigeria is the Boko Haram. Going by their name, Western education is forbidden. So that is the message they're trying to pass across to us. And that's why they keep attacking the children, going to school to adopt them, so as to discourage people, to put fear into people from sending their children to school. So that is their target, man. But either they are winning or they are not winning now, in <laughs> that the, the answer is left to you and I, <laughs> going by what we have on ground now in the nation. So do you think that the government has done enough? And uh, on this particular day where we're saying that we're celebrating children, uh, you know, 
International Children's Day or Children's Day, however you want to put it. Do you think that the government has done enough in terms of uh, protecting these children, ensuring because every child has a right to life yeah. and a right to the basic things of life. Yeah. Education is also part of it. Yeah. So do you think that the Nigerian government has done enough? They are trying their best, but it's not good enough. They appear to have been overwhelmed by this issue. Honestly. How? When you say overwhelmed, what do you mean? The, when, when, you are doing, when you are trying to address an issue and the result is not forthcoming, the, the, the terrorist seems to understand this issue, so they keep attacking. However, like I said earlier, the government needs to wake up needs to do more, needs to, needs to, so that the, the, this group will not win, will not win in their attack, because the way it is now is as if they appear to be winning. So I would say that governments, though they are trying, they need to do more, better, much better than what they're doing now. Mm, so what, can you be very specific? As in, equip our military much better than they are now. Yeah. Although recently some Tucanos were bought and uh, fighters, uh, arm, I mean, armored uh, vehicle for them. But then we still seem not to be getting results. Some people said that government are too reluctant maybe to go after the, this terrorist group. And uh, I wouldn't want to say they are totally wrong in the sense that as we speak now, Ma, there, has, there, has, there is no single conviction at the law courts since this issue started. So that, this seems to uh, embolden the terrorists the more. So if government say it's trying, we are doing our best. Because I, re I can recollect when the issue of uh, dark chicken now, abduction occurred, you know, our president uh, referred to it as an issue of national disaster, if, I, if I'm right. And he she, I mean, sorry, he encouraged the military to go up all, all out after the, the, the kidnappers. After about four or five weeks after, some of them were rescued through what they call the behind the scene arrangements. Mm. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that What the government has to has to bring to the table needs to become become more obvious to people. Although they are trying, I will not I will not really want to blame them. As in, I mean, put the blame squarely at their feet. Although, although, let me just round up this point. Now. The the our constitution put it on their shoulder. The, 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 the our responsibility of security. I mean, the issue of our security and welfare is, is primarily the responsibility of our government. So uh, they should not shy away from that. They should do more. They should do better than they are doing now. Mm. Um, just before I get to the other question, okay? okay? Uh, we know that when, in, in about 2014, about that time, mm. shortly after you had the 257 or thereabout, if I'm not mistaken, abduction of the Chibok girls, yeah, uh, true, yeah. you, you, you had the Safe School Initiative as an idea that was launched. I'm not, I don't know if you're aware of this, but it probably might just be, but, but, but I'll put it to you. The, the reason for launching that initiative was to assure safety of you know, schools. Uh, and so one of the one of the ways to ensure the safety of the schools was to uh, go about with perimeter fencing, 
because we know that some of the schools that are located mm. in the northern yeah. part, uh, a lot of schools, not necessarily in the northern okay. part, but you also have a lot of schools these days, especially public schools without fencing and so all of that. So the, this also was also uh, a means to ensure it was an effort and then you had sponsors to ensure that uh, you have you don't have a repetition of this incident. But I'd, I'd like to share your thoughts on the Safe School Initiative because it hasn't really worked. I mean, if we're, yes. if we're here now and if we're talking about uh, thousands of schools shut down, we're talking about 11,000 and some fractions shut down. And schools, a lot of parents not even being able to want to send their kids to school. What could be responsible? Uh, I can remember the the Jagara kidnap, which was which was the highest so far. I think Kankara, is no, it? No, a, not the Kankara. Jangebe, okay. Jangebe, 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 okay. Yeah, All right. yeah, in, in Sanfara, which was which still like the, almost the highest adoption in numbers. One of the released students, you know, said that uh, she will never go back to school. That uh, a life, a dream is to become a doctor. But I want to believe go by what <laughs> I experienced, you know, <laughs> at the hand of the kidnappers. She said that uh, she's not going to go back to school again. So uh, the issue of a war offense, the issue is, this issue is bigger than war, uh, because many times the, the terrorists will break into the war and enter into the school. I think. The government needs to provide, particularly in the Northeast, security, feasible security, around and within the school, beyond the uh, issue of uh, uh, that, 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 that's, that That's part of the security. Yes. Uh, that, but that's we should also not just the... narrow it down to building uh, walls around the school. That's what I'm trying to say, more. No, there should be physical presence. Because the way it is now, we need to stand up to this issue, man. Honestly, we need to stand up to this issue. Because most of these, how many of these schools are being guided by pol the police or the military? Even as we speak now. Maybe some distance away, maybe some checkpoint here and there, but not really around or within the school. Or even when they are within the school, by the time the terrorists appear, 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 appear they seem to over overrun the security and do whatever they want to do and move away with these children. Mm. Well, some people say that these schools are in isolation, but let's also, you know, look at the development over time. We've had several um, developments, and so one of them would be the Bring Back Our Girls. It was a movement that was initiated. Do you think that that's also achieved anything? Looking at it, efforts that government has made an effort on one hand, whether it's collaborative. You've also said government has made uh, their own effort. We're also looking at some of these things. Now, let's also come back to um, movements that's been carried out by individuals and uh, citizens, well respected. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh, particularly, the Bring Back Our Girls, it seems to be more the most popular among these uh, initiatives. Mm. You know? uh, going by maybe the popularity of the of its convener. I don't know if you have, uh, permit me to mention go ahead, about go the, ahead. The, uh, Dr. OBS Ekozili, you know, we, who happened to help to be the uh, person that forwarded the book recently released on Lea Sharibo. But in the process, there are so many actors, state actors, you know, groups fighting, you know, uh, Raising their voices concerning the issue of uh, school adoption and terrorism and what have you, insecurity, I mean, generally in the country. Hardly do you open to, you listen to news that <laughs> you don't see people talking about this issue. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to say is that the, the, let's not say that maybe we are not achieving results. It's better to talk than to keep silence. Somebody said, when you keep drumming a drum, eh? It will get to a point some people will start listening to you. Although it could be, it might, I mean, it might be, it appears to be frustrating because it's like, a, a, as it is now, most of this talk, most of this uh, uh, campaign seems not to be achieving its desired results. 
the same thing, another thing I also uh, discovered because it, it's of, late, it's of uh, recent that um, I, God just used me to write a book on Leah Sharibu. <laughs> and uh, I believe God also wants to give me a voice. We'll, we'll get to that okay, point. Okay. We'll definitely get to that point, okay. you know, of your book. But let's also, you know, stay with this now. In all of this, because it's really worrisome. Yes, worrisome, yes. Why, why has it looked like, uh, or why is it looking like it's a hopeless situation? Mm. Why haven't we been able to protect these children, our children, you know, from these bandits? Now it looks like, you know, banditry has become a political weapon. Why are they so emboldened from Boko Haram who are having different names and different groups emerging? And they seem to be carrying out one and the same, you know, objective, however you look at it. Yeah. Kidnapping, whether they're not kidnapping school children, but they're kidnapping people. This morning, we just stayed with, you know, at the fact that the attacks has been in schools. Um, recently, if you look at the population for student writing examination, the states like Zamfara was excluded. <laughs> they couldn't really have students yeah. filing in. And there were some excuses that government is owing the and wife. has not paid. And some people feel like, you know, that's uh, also uh, a hoax. It's, it's not true. Why is this going on? Why is this going on despite government effort? Why is this going on despite the fact that we know that this administration came on I I came on the heel that you know security would be yeah. a thing of the past? Yeah. Why is it going on? If you say that government is making effort, why can't we, um, you know, rescue these children that are still in captivity? Even Leah Shai, but at the time, undisclosed negotiations went on. You know, Leah Shaibu and a few other persons are still, why did the government not go about? So the question is, why are we still in this situation? We keep asking this question, why, why? But well, let me just come, you know. I think that the government need to do more. Like I said earlier, there, there, has, there is no single court case that have convicted, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, a single terrorist in this country. So government should not be seen as, I'm choosing my word, taking side. Do you think government is taking side? No, I say should not be seen. But, but do you think they are taking side? No, no, I know they are not taking side. Are you trying to be politically <laughs> straight or choose your words correctly? They are not taking side, they are not taking side, honestly. But they shouldn't be seen as taking side. Because perception is key here. My you recollect that, uh, I can't remember the year now, that a citizen of America was being kidnapped in this, I uh, adopted in this Nigeria. All the way from America, they came down to Nigeria. Nobody knew they were around. They did the job perfectly. It was when they were leaving, they, they, they made the government to know that, okay, our citizen that was kidnapped, we have good job, fantastic. That was commitment to issues. So I think our government need to learn from that, honestly. No, let's, they need to show more commitment. They need to they, let there be scapegoats, you know? Uh, the other time, uh, the world gave us the information concerning the financier of uh, all these issues in our country. I mean, I think security issue in our country. How many of them have been arrested? How many of them, to the best of money, have been jailed? So, so let's not let 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 government not be seen as if I'm choosing my word. They are, they don't have the way power to tackle this issue. It shouldn't be seen as, in, as not having the... So if, 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 there, if there is a... Uh, if there have been no uh, uh, punishment strong enough, these people would have been deterred. No, but, but you also have a situation where you have government saying that uh, bandits, these terrorists, they're being reintegrated into society. They're being forgiven. Uh, 
they are being handled like you know given amnesty that's what it is that's what's been said so so how what kind of efforts can government show when government is taking a side because you're saying that it shouldn't look like government is taking a side uh, in your words but um, perception you say it's is it, it's key it's it's better than facts and so uh, this is what we can this is what is being perceived with this action, do you think that government is sincere in the fight against terrorism and also <laughs> protecting our children on this? Especially, I mean, look at the statistics. We don't even have time to begin to read them yeah. out for you. Uh, the figures, the number of schools that are closed, uh, the number uh, of children that are, are in captivity. Uh, excuse me. And not the fact you also want to agree that some are not very reported. Sure. So you want to agree because of the security threat as well yeah. to those who would go to report, bring this news to you. Yeah. So, so do you think that government is very honest uh, in protecting <laughs> the lives of our children and ensuring that they have access, you know, to quality education as a human put, right? Uh, no, I'm <laughs> not. I mean, we're just talking. It's our country. And when we have to talk about <laughs> no, this, things. Not. But like I said, <laughs> fascination is key. No, decisions speak for itself. I, I totally understand. Yeah. But, let, but let's get to your book now. Yeah. Uh, you authored a book. By grace of now, God. What exactly is the reason for this book? And what is, has this book achieved at the time that you have put it out up until this moment that we speak? What's Thank the motivation behind this book? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, for, uh, let me say, I, 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 I appreciate your point of comment talking about the book. To me, is is God given uh, vision to me? Uh, one morning, God called my attention to the plight of Leah. Particularly, particularly. Just Leah. And I said particularly. I'm going somewhere. Mm. No, no, we have talked about insecurity generally. Mm. But the issue of Leah. It is insecurity that led to issues, issues, issue of lay. So let me just take it from there, then I will, I will just be patient with me, man. God called my attention to our issue. And the question was that, how many of us, sorry, how many of us Christians with our titles, with our position, could actually pay the price? that Leah is still presently paying in captivity. You will recollect, Ma, that uh, she is being held back due to her faith, a uh, decision not to renounce her faith. We can't, we can't shy away from that. That was the reason why she is still in captivity. So, this is not an easy thing for anybody to do. And I think that is the message God is trying to pass across to the world through this little girl. That how many of us will be able to stand on what we believe, on our conviction, in the face of barrel of guns? I want to liken her issue to the issue of Jesus. I don't know if I'm permitted to, okay, the issue of Jesus. You know, Jesus became who he is today on the Mount Traverse, sacrifice. He chose to sacrifice his life for mankind. Which the same thing, Leah, did and in, she still paid the price for that. She, she chose to satisfy, I mean, sacrifice her freedom for Christ. Hmm. You will recollect that others were being returned, although five died in the process of being headed into the vehicle. But others were returned, but Leah is still in captivity. So the the price that this girl paid and she's still paying presently is not what anybody should wish away, as though it's not important. That is the message. 
All right, thank you so much, uh, uh, Rafiu Kutai. Kutai. Kutai, Kutai yes. uh, for being part of the show this morning. Yes. We appreciate Rafiu Kutai is the author of Heroine of Faith. And we have been looking at the Children's Day celebration and the fact that you have a lot of children, uh, you know, being under threat of insecurity in Nigeria, especially in the northern part of the country. Well, that's the size of the conversation. We appreciate your time this morning and, uh, you know, the piece of work that you've put out. We wish you all the best. Thanks for the opportunity. And that's it. We step on the bricks now. When we return, we will be looking at the next conversation, bridging the gap through tunneling and underground space in Nigeria. Stay with us.